So a few years ago, I was in this course called Development Ventures. And I was asked the question, how do you build a business for a billion people in developing countries? And I asked my team, and we all thought, well, what's the one problem that billions of people are facing and that we're all passionate about? We all said, healthcare. So today, I would take you on my journey to see healthcare around the world and looking at it with the critical eye on the problems, the root causes, which are access, can't get to the doctors, cost, can't pay for them, and lastly, there just aren't enough doctors in a lot of these countries. So we will start from Taiwan, where we are now, going to South Asia, a country bordering India, Bangladesh. Bangladesh has a population of 150 million people, and their GDP per person per year is only $1,500. And in Bangladesh, we're going to zoom in particular islands. These are temporary islands that are made by rivers, but every few months or years, they get destroyed. And there are millions of women and children living on these islands, and most of the men left to go find work in the cities. And the only way they can find health care is through NGOs like Friendship, funded by the U.S., that comes in once a, few, once a few times a year with doctors on the boat, and you can see the women lined up to see the doctors. Here's Habiba, and she's about seven months pregnant. She told us she hopes that the ship will come before the baby's born. Now, let's go somewhere else. To what we consider is the developing country, countries, south, south part of Africa, Botswana. Now, what's interesting about Botswana is they're one of the largest producers of diamonds in the world. That means they have a wealthy government that can actually fund most of the public. However, with a population of only two million, population is sparse throughout with the capital in Habaroni right here, bordering South Africa on that side. There, the problem is the lack of doctors. In the entire country, in the public health system, there is only one oral surgeon, as an example. And for skin diseases, which is prevalent, there's only one dermatologist who is on loan from the United States. And the country also has about 40% HIV AIDS rate in urban areas. Here is an 11-year-old girl with AIDS. She was infected with AIDS at birth by her mother. You can see an outbreak of some scaly patch skin on her neck. And for her to find care, she would have to walk for hours outside towards the city area, go to a clinic, wait about eight hours without food or water, because they wouldn't have that in the clinic while you just wait. And there, she would be told by the doctor, I can't help you. I don't know what it is. She heard that there's an American doctor in the capital, but it's 500 kilometers away. She can't afford to travel, so she won't make it. Let's go to another country. This country is much wealthier. GDP is $46,000 per year. And there are 310 million people in the United States. Here, the issue I will show you is the rising cost of health care. Meanwhile, income per person per capita on a linear scale hasn't moved much. How can people afford this? And this is the United States. In the United States, there are 50 million people who do not have insurance. This means they pay out of pocket. The minute you walk into a clinic, you're looking at 50 to $200. The minute you go into the emergency room, it's about $2,000. And of the 310 million people, 46 million are on the poverty line. What that means is you have to choose between food or health. And there are a lack of specialists. The Americans, there are a million new cases of skin cancer every year. But there are only three or four dermatologists for every 100,000 people. This is a picture of cancer. There are few cancers, some are benign, some are bad, and one type may ca causes 75% of all death in cancer. 
If an American has this form on his or her skin, he may have to wait six months to a year to just see a doctor that would tell him, am I going to die? But there's hope. And when I see this around the world, I ask myself, how can it be that we have all the resources at hand and there are billions of people who are still dying? Using the Gapminder tool that we just saw, here is a picture of child mortality rate, which I'm using as a proxy to measure quality of health care. So this is, to the right is number of deaths for children, and to the left are um, less deaths for children, versus the vertical axis of health spending. And as you can see, there's a huge population here who have about 20 to 200 child mortality rate. And that, I estimate, maybe about 2 billion people. That's a lot of people. But there's hope. In the very recent years, what you're seeing is the rise for mobile phone adoption all over, including developing countries to developed countries. And much more now. This is data from a while ago, and in the past two years, it's been so much more. This means we can actually communicate with some of these people where we couldn't before. Another piece of great news is there are abundant number of health workers, nurses, who reside nearby these patients, but they just don't have the medical knowledge. So what we found it from the course at MIT is Click Diagnostics is a mobile company that develops mobile software, and we provide them to health workers and clinicians so that they can connect patients directly to doctors. I will let our health worker, Bonnie, tell you how it works. Well, with the phone, I'll be in the office, the patient comes, there are some um, questions that are in the phone that I will be asking the patient, then if there are some wounds or some flash, I'll be taking pictures, then I say this, then I think it into the, then the information goes to the doctor, then the doctor replies, then I, I tell the patient to come either tomorrow or two days, then the patient comes, I give her the results and the medication that she's supposed to, be, to use. Yeah, I mean, I think absolutely this, this technology, especially, you know, as far as educating other health care workers and dermatology diagnoses, I think that it would be fantastic, particularly because those nurses or those people that are taking um, the history are the ones that are getting the follow-up. It's nice because uh, you can just, uh, I can just send it to the doctors and then, and then it can be easy for me. So there is a ver better version of this video on our website, um, clickdiagnostics.com, if you want to see that. So you ask, this is a business, right? How does it make money? I think it's charity. Well, drawing an analogy of how internet has literally transformed how business is done today, Mobile technology can do that as well. And I will use a very popular, successful business, Amazon.com, to explain. So before there was Amazon.com, we would have Bob in Alaska. So Bob says, I want to learn Taiwanese. Where do I find a book to learn Taiwanese? So Bob looks around in Alaska. Obviously, he couldn't find one. Meanwhile, we have a super bookstore in New York City has tons of books from the New York Times bestseller to Taiwanese. And all these books have different rankings. And obviously, a bookstore will have lots of books that will be bestsellers, maybe one or two of the later ranking ones. So you got lots of people lining up to buy the New York bestseller. But the bookstore is not really going to try to serve people like Bob, who wants to learn Taiwanese. Because why would he? Because this is really expensive. And Bob, on the other hand, He's not going to fly to New York just to get that book. So guess what? I think he doesn't get the book. So along comes Amazon.com, which makes it so easy to get a book, even a digital copy. So Bob in Alaska can just type in a search term that says, give me a digital copy of Taiwanese book. And Amazon says, all right, right away, and serves it to him. 
At the same time, anyone here can say, I want the New York bestseller, give it to me. Amazon will say, sure. Cost to Amazon, exactly the same. No additional cost to serve this person from far away who wants a very specific item and all of these people. So what does this look like for Amazon sales? Well, the number one ranking book obviously has tons of buyers. Number two, a little less. And Bob's item, I think he's the only one that bought it. And there's everybody in between. So what happens is that the traditional bookstores, they would only really supply books that are of, that are of certain popularity. We call it rank L. But what Amazon is able to do is to serve everybody all the way down the tail end and make it profitable. This business phenomenon is called the long tail, first popularized by Chris Innocent, editor-in-chief of Wired magazine. So what's interesting about this is that if we look at this model, we click, and then we look at click diagnostics model, quite similar. Nami, who lives in rural Botswana, has a skin rash. Well, instead of going all the way to the 500 kilometer away hospital, she can just go to her local clinic where there's a trained health worker like Bonnie you just saw with a cell phone. Bonnie would say, tell me your skin problems, puts it into the phone, sends it to the doctor and um, through click diagnostics. Doctors reviews it on the secure website, writes back, well, this is what I think you have. Sends it back to Bonnie, Bonnie says, hey, this is what you have, this is your treatment, please come back for a follow-up. And that makes it possible to serve someone far away in Botswana as someone who may live close to the capital at no additional cost. So this makes it a viable business thanks to mobile technologies. Now let's look at the similar graph. And we're we're instant, and remember earlier in Amazon, we were looking at the number of people who are buying. Here, because the people we want to serve are so poor, we want to make sure they can also afford it. So they're very specific on the criteria is, I want to know what health problem I have and at this cost we can afford. So here, what we can build in, it's a lower cost for healthcare, serving the underserved all the way out in rural areas as well as the ones in urban areas. And not so surprisingly, this quite mirrors the original quality of health proxy by child mortality chart that we saw earlier in the vertical healthcare spending axis. And for the past two years, we have been going around the world training different health workers, training clinicians, training midwives, training pharmacists, and training more and more people so that they can be the ones providing healthcare through mobile phones at a very low cost. In the US, we're working in about 10 different cities, working with American Academy of Dermatology, working to provide the free clinics and training for mobile teledermatology. This cancer picture you saw is melanoma, which is the most deadly skin cancer type. And this causes 75% of the death. And we can now provide a diagnosis on what this is, what this is within three days instead of six months or a year. And for this child of 11 years old, um, part of her skin issue is because of her HIV. And she's provided a treatment, and now she's on her way to get, getting better with her skin issue. And for the mothers and children on those river islands, we're working with Friendship to provide primary health care so that there will be health workers going to them on a weekly basis to see if they're at risk to provide their children with vaccines. We're also working with BRAC, which is the largest NGO in the world, to provide maternal and child health care specifically in the urban slum areas. And to date, we are able to reach about 500,000 people. But that's a very small number compared to the least one billion we want to get. So I here invite you to join me in this healthcare revolution, to save lives and help people become healthy so that they can be a part of our global economy. Thank you.